Hey everyone, Marcus here from the Ashland Fly Shop. And today we're going to tie with some of our new materials. Um, we're going to do a little shank fly in a couple of my, really my favorite color pattern um, here on the Rogue, which is black and olive. Um, we're going to start at the back of the fly and just wrap up consistently towards the front. And this is Senyo's 40 millimeter black articulated shank. And then I'm going to come in, and what I've got here is 30 pound fire line, um, which you can find in bulk um, at various places, and then a size 2 owner hook. Um, and I'm just going to lay it on top of the shank here, thinking about the total length that I'd like this fly to be. For a lot of our rogue fishing, um, particularly in the fall, I like a fly that's in this kind of two and a half, three inch range. Um, that's just the perfect, perfect length for our rogue steelhead. They seem to really like flies in that length. So I'm going to dip both of those strands through the eye. The nice thing about these shanks um, is the little bit bigger eye so that you don't kind of run up with issues fitting that through there. And on the way back, it's really important um, to get solid wraps every few turns. Just, just pull everything down um, and get some nice solid wraps in there. And just make sure that you've got even tension throughout the shank. And that wire is not going anywhere. So off the back, we're going to start with um, Senyo's Fusion dubbing and just kind of get a little hot spot at the at the back of the fly here um, and you can do that in a loop or for time's sake you can just roll it on just like this and just build a nice ball here and then I'm going to start with um, our barred schloppen from Montana Fly Company, which is this, this new product that we're really excited about here. Um, and this, this material is just kind of, just kind of flash these flies up compared to a standard um, schloppen, just adds a little element, a um, little extra contrast. I'm just gonna cut part of the way down this stem here, peel away, um, a clean stripe and I'm going to use about an inch, um, an inch and a half of this feather. I'm going to use both sides um, of the feather and just build um, a little station in the back of the fly here. Um, cut off the tip there. I'm going to grab this back of the fly kind of pull all that, that those slopping feathers out and then start to wrap forward. And as you wrap, really with any feathers, um, you just want to keep, keep those materials from laying down um, on each other, keep them from getting caught. Um, it'll just make everything look a little bit prettier when it's all done. I'm going to come forward and tie off this stem. And I'm just going to tie it all down so it's nice and even there. And then you've just got not a full station, but just a little kind of rear collar off the end of the fly. Um, from there, I'm going to tie in the tinsel that will secure the body, and that is, um, or the wire, I should say, that will secure the body, and that's ultra wire, um, the medium size in silver. I'm just going to give myself room for a, a little body here, and I'm going to tie in um, probably my favorite body material um, on intruder type flies, and it's crinkled mirror flash in the pearlescent color. Just grab a couple strands of it. Looks like here I've got four, four strands, which is just perfect. Um, 
and lay them along the body. And you want to kind of see, this is what I like to see when I'm wrapping a body like this. I like to see all those strands lay down together. Um, because it just means that as you wrap forward, you're just going to be wrapping with a, a wider, um, almost like a thicker tinsel, so it's going to take less time. Just make sure that you're covering, doing what you can to cover up any black thread. Not the end of the world if some black thread is showing through because you can make sure as you're wrapping the wire behind it to just cover up those those thread marks with the wire. Just nice consistent wraps of wire here, secure that in place, lock it down, clip it off. I'm going to do another um, dubbing ball on the front of this fly just because I have the room for it. Same with the last one, I'm just going to spin this one on. start with a little dubbing loop here and this will hold my prop which is going to be black arctic fox I'm just going to take a little section of fox Like everything, how much arctic fox um, you want to use depends on how big the profile of the fly is. Um, this one's going to be a little bit, little bit more trim of a profile. Just push it all back. And as you see there, it just gives it a nice. Um, Really nice pointy look. And then I'm going to come in with what will be the main body of this fly, um, which is also Montana Fly Company ostrich. Um, and this is, this is um, black, which is probably the most common color um, that I mix with flies on the Rogue. Um, and these ones I'm just going to tie it in. I usually spin, but it's worth, worth showing you how to just tie it in. So I'll just grab a clump right there. That's eight, um, eight individual strands right there. And you really get, um, when tying in, you really get a lot of control on the length of the fly. And that, that's something that I really like about tying it in. is it gives you a lot of control over length. And then pull your vise over. One of the best benefits of having a rotary vise is just that right there, being able to twist it, get all your materials on um, to proportion your fly evenly um, from all sides. I think that's a really important thing as we build these steelhead flies. This one, probably just lay another clump on this side. You can see that these are of different lengths, that you have longer fibers and shorter ones. I don't, I don't really mind that. Um, 
I'd rather it be that way than them all be the exact same length because when this is pulled under tension, you want different lengths um, of material showing through the fly so that it doesn't look like um, some of the flies that you'll see out there, everything's cut to the exact same length and it just doesn't really look, just doesn't look natural when all those materials come to the same point. You want, want there to be um, some variation in the lengths there and I'm just gonna fill out um, the top a little bit. couple more and that that's how I like my that's about as much ostrich as I like to see on a lot of my flies and then over the top of that, um, just for good looks, um, we're going to add in two married strands of Montana Fly Company's olive saddle. Um, these are their barred saddles. Um, and it just, just helps um, add a little flash to a fly like this. Um, and you can kind of get a sense of the length there. I don't mind just cutting the stems if you're gonna peel them back a bit. Um, finding that length that you're looking for you can marry those tips where when you bring them together they come to just about the same point. And then we'll work back, peel off some area there. And that is just a little bit long for this fly. And I always start with the feather that lays down on the, if you're looking top down, the one that lays on the top of the fly on the right side. Then I'll come in on the near side tie it in at the same same angle just on the other end of the fly there and what you get you should see your feathers pointing like this and the stems coming out in an opposite V some people leave the stems in there and tie with them but um, I don't find that you lose too many feathers just tying them in like like that and then for the the main collar of the fly um, we're going to use the same barred schloppen and olive that we used on the back of the fly. Um, and how big you want this collar, you can decide on, on the fly. I'm going to keep this one kind of in the middle of the feather. And because I have um, a fair amount of room that's left there, when you're working with short room, you want to use both sides of the fly because it takes less wraps of the feather. But when you have extra room like you have here, might as well um, trim down the feather um, because it takes up, it'll help take up that extra room. And you want to think about the direction that you'd like to lay that feather in. Um, so I'm going to trim from the direction I'm looking at, I'm going to trim the whole right side of this feather. A lot of people who use schlop and seem to really prefer to only use a half of the feather um, because it just lays on there so neatly. Come in by the tip. Be kind of conscious of where those last thread wraps were um, with the overhanging feathers because you don't want to 
pinch them down too much because then they'll just kind of lay right into the fly. You want them on top of the fly. Bring your feather or your thread up towards the front and leave that room for, for this collar here. Just make sure that you've got nice, consistent wraps. I'm going to tie off that stem. I'm actually going to grab that feather a little bit. Just get a couple wraps of thread on it there, just to help seal it all down there. And then it's just a matter, this head is a little bit bigger than I like, but it's okay. It's just a matter of evening out these thread wraps so that you have a nice consistent shape at the top of the fly, um, that it doesn't look uneven in any area. And I'll whip finish. I'll do one more. And then I'll just secure that head with loons hard head and clear.